Hi everyone and welcome back to the Vector Twist channel, where we cover usually things about Illustrator and sometimes even Photoshop. Today I would like to share with you a speed art drawing that I've created, an isometric building or even isometric house inspired by the game Minecraft. Again, this is a speed art drawing, but I will go over a few points here and there and explain how I've done things, especially how to set up your sketch properly how to work with the smart guides and actually change the preferences in Illustrator so you won't get frustrated when it wants to snap to everything or nothing, and also how to use layers with Illustrator and set them up for blend modes, especially transparencies like multiply, overlay or soft light, and apply this to the whole layer, not just to one of your objects. And I will show you some neat recolor artwork tips. So let's get started. So this is how I usually set up my document in Illustrator. When you look at the Layers panel, I have a layer for Guide, Sketch and Colors. That really helps to lock the elements so they don't interfere with anything else. Now for the Guides, of course, I used one of my isometric grid patterns and then expanded it. So if I turn on the Guides, here they are. So we have the isometric grid that we can work with, and then we have the Sketch, and then of course, on top of here, I have a little reference photo that I already colored in my artwork, and then my Colors. Now the first thing I would like to show is how to actually set up your sketch properly. So if we have the guides visible, I'm going to select my image that I've placed into my Illustrator document and we're going to double click the layer. In the Layers Options window and then right down here I'm going to click Template. This will make it into a template, lock it right away and also dim the image that you've placed to 50%. If you need it stronger, you can also boost it up or if you need it even lighter, just decrease the percentage. Once you click OK, you can see that it has been dimmed by 50% and it's automatically locked. Of course, you can align it to your isometric grid, but I want to show you in the next step how to actually work with the smart guides so they won't interfere right away. Now under View, you know how to turn on your smart guides. But there's also a specific setting in the Smart Guides. Now when you go to Illustrator and Preferences and then choose Smart Guides, in the Preference window you will usually have most of these things selected here, like Align to the Guides, Object Highlighting, Transform Tools. If you only check Anchor and Path Labels, it will be much easier to create your isometric designs. Now make sure you uncheck everything and leave only Anchor and Path Labels selected. Once you've done that, you can start drawing. So let's go right into the speed art drawing and make sure to watch it to the end because in between I'm going to explain some really important things with Illustrator. I want to stop quickly here and actually show you that we need to set up some layers. So make sure that you call your layers properly for like the orange room, the yellow room, etc. Because I just started and everything of course is just on one layer again and later on that gets really confusing. So I'm just going to add the layers one by one and then give them names and then of course drag my elements onto the specific layers. So just add a new layer, give it the proper name and then select the objects and drag them onto the layer. I'm going to continue this with all the other rooms, but the rest of course is self-explanatory and I'm going to speed this up.
So now I'm going to create a new layer for the windows and I want to show you a really neat trick what you can do when you want to have a particular layer have one specific blend mode instead of singly choosing your objects. So we're going to add windows to our artwork and instead of bringing down the opacity settings or even a blend mode on top in the toolbar, we can actually apply this to the whole layer. So all we have to do is actually click on this small grey circle here and then we're going to go to the opacity settings and then we're going to either choose a blend mode or reduce the opacity altogether. In this case I think I'm going to try 40% and then I'm going to add my windows to my design. And as you can see on the artboard, all of the shapes, even though I have 100% normal opacity, will be set to 40% opacity because I applied it to the whole layer. This is really a neat way to continuously work and speed up your workflow.
Now here's the finished artwork. So in order to create actually quite multiple variations out of your design, simply select all of your artwork, make sure of course in your layers nothing is locked, and then we're going to open up the recolor artwork tool. Now here I want to keep certain elements the same, especially the highlights for the windows and my highlights for the corners of the walls. So in edit I'm going to scroll all the way down where I have my white and gray colors. So I think I want to keep my floors the same, so I'm just going to click on the arrow, which will basically turn off that particular color. It will not be affected when I change the colors with the recolor artwork. Once that's done, we can go over to edit. And of course, we want to make sure that we have everything linked so all of the colors will move accordingly. And instead of selecting one and moving it around in the circle, what we can do in this case is work with the HSP setting and then just move the U slider. Now either you can go with the cursor or you can just grab it and then move it around and make sure you have recolor artwork checked so you can see what's happening live on your artboard. Since my original color setup works quite well for changing it in the end, you can see that we can create multiple designs out of this one. And of course, since color is subjective, pick the ones that you like the best and then go from there. I also would like to show you another trick with recolor artwork. In order to get the colors back from the original design, all we have to do is hit the button reset. So we have our original look. And then we're going to click this here. It specifies the mode of the color adjustment sliders. So you can choose from RGB, HSP, CMYK, WebRGB and Lab. And at the same time, we can also select global adjust. Now, once I select that, I can change the saturation, the brightness, the temperature and the luminosity. Now, when you work with that, basically bring down the saturation of all the colors or even increase them. You can also work with the brightness, make it darker. You could create, for example, a night scene out of it and also switch the temperature. First, let me reset everything here. Now, watch what happens when I actually play with the temperature slider. If I push it to the right, they become much warmer and I can actually create a sort of monochromatic design. And if I push it over to the other side, the opposite sort of will happen. My colors become much cooler and they create again a monochromatic design but with cool colors. Now this is a really neat way to find different colors for your designs. I'm going to switch back to the HSB. So I'm not going to change my colors here so I'm going to cancel. And this is it. If you enjoyed this video please give it a like and in the comments let me know if you've created your own Minecraft designs before or if you're going to. I would really love to know. And with that said I'll see you the next time.